once you've created a test and everything's looking good to go, there's one last thing to take care of before rolling out the test to the candidates. First, define the test duration. By default, Hackerot will set a test duration depending on the number of questions, the type of questions that are present in a test, and the overall difficulty level. You're free to customize these as per your requirement. Once the test duration is set, you have to establish a cutoff score. Just as it is with the test duration, HackerEarth provides you with a recommended cutoff. This recommendation is based on historical data that we've collected from multiple tests in the past. And of course, it is customizable as per your requirements. Next step, language settings. Here, you choose some of the many languages that a candidate can answer the test in. Currently, HackerEarth supports English, Japanese, Chinese, French, Portuguese, Russian, and German. Further down, you have proctoring settings. It's very important to ensure that proctoring is enabled to ensure that only genuine candidates make the cut and malpractice is weeded out. As always, you can choose the level of stringency with which a test is to be proctored. However, by default, the order of questions would be shuffled and copy pasting onto the editor from external sources is completely disabled. Then you have the candidate snapshot feature where throughout the duration of the test, snapshots of the candidates are captured to ensure that you are alerted if proctoring engine detects any sort of malpractice during the entire test. You are also alerted if a candidate has gotten up and gone elsewhere during a test and if a candidate is holding a mobile phone. Further, you can restrict the candidate to answer the test in full screen mode and also prevent the candidate from switching between tabs or opening a new window. Of course, there is always a certain benefit of doubt you might always want to extend to the candidate. Our recommendation is to set a minimum number of allowed tab switches before penalizing a candidate by logging them out. This threshold will not be known to the candidate. You could also restrict to address with which a candidate can attempt the test. In cases where you're administering a test on a campus or in a particular geography, this feature is useful to prevent any potential malpractice. Further, you have candidate settings where you can collect specific pieces of information from a candidate instead of doing it separately. For instance, you can ask a candidate to volunteer these pieces of information such as work experience, CGPA, expected compensation, length of notice period and so on. You could request for a custom detail here as well and of course you could make some fields mandatory. Further down, you have email and report settings. You can enter the details of a POC or a test admin here, and they will receive a report once the candidate completes the assessment on their email. If you don't want to send these emails, you can uncheck the option. Here, you can also send a self-assessment report to the candidate if you choose to. Now, let's talk about admin management. If you want to add an admin who needs access to that particular test, you can go ahead and add them here from the list of admins who are currently using the platform. In case you want to change the details of the point of contact to another person, you can click on the drop down and select other admins option. This comes in handy when, say, someone from the tech team has created a test, but you want the POC to be someone from the TA team. This way, if a candidate needs help or clarification, they can reach out to the appropriate person. Now, let's explore the test description section. Here, you can actually add any details or branding of your company. It could be an image, a logo or even a video that you want candidates to see prior to them taking up the test. In this section, the platform will add certain test instructions by default. But if you want to edit and make changes to it, you can always go ahead and do that as well. On the right, you have the test name, which is of course customizable. 
Then you have the start on and the end on settings using which you can define for how many days the test remains open. Say you want the test to be open from Saturday 10 a.m. to Saturday 12 p.m. You can go ahead and define this at this section and the candidate will be only able to take up the test in this window defined by you. Hackroth also allows you to customize the test link. So you can do a little bit of white labeling here as well. Now, in terms of inviting candidates, there are two types of access you can provide to a test. You can either make a test invite only or public. Let's say you want to run an open challenge in a university and anyone from that university could be part of this test. In that case, you can make the test a public test and share the link with your point of contact on campus. To prevent folks outside a cohort from taking a test, public test, you can make it password protected. The other option is to make a test invite only. This gives you the ability to share the test via email with a specific test set of candidates. The next step is to add any tags to a particular test. This step helps you quickly search for the test at any point of time, especially in cases where tens or hundreds or thousands of tests are run. It's very important to tag each test so you can always pull it up quickly. Once you have all the settings in place, the next step is to actually publish the test. Once you've published a test, it's recommended that you don't make any further changes. Further, you will not be able to change the start date after a test is published. So make sure that all the details are solid before publishing. Once a test is published, there will be a practice test that is dynamically generated for each test. This contains a practice set of questions that will be similar in nature to the tests that you have actually created. For example, if the actual test has multiple choice and programming questions, then the practice test will also have these question types, but of course the questions will be completely different. The reason for this is to make sure that your candidates are familiar with the hacker or platform prior to attempting the test. The practice test is shared as part of the invite email and we recommend that you always include this in your testing process. And that's everything you need to know about publishing and sharing a test. Happy recruiting!